When you're using Playwright's test runner in JavaScript or TypeScript, you are heavily relying on Playwright fixtures. And if you haven't heard the term, here we have an example. This is a quick Playwright end-to-end -end test that does some end-to-end -end testing things. And thanks to the fixture architecture, you can go in there and you can specify what objects like page or request you want to use. And Playwright will then set it up for you, but also tear it down when your test case is done. And this architecture is so flexible that you can also add your own custom fixtures, which I'm a big fan of. Now, quite a few people here on the channel asked us why this approach is better than just importing files and using them in your tests. Let's find out. Here we have a quick example spec TS file that includes two test cases. They both use a page object model that is called dashboard page coming from prompts dashboard. And the test cases also use a user object that comes here from this user configuration. Then they call go to login or create check of this page object model. And there's nothing particularly wrong with this, but you already see that in both test cases, we have to initialize the dashboard page. We have to pass in the user. So we have some duplication going on here. Let's shuffle some things around and use fixtures to clean this up and use Playwright's native test runner features. To make our dashboard page available here in the test runner so that we can say dashboard here, we have to change how we use Playwright and extend the test method. And I like to do that in a different file. So let's import this one and it's available at base. The base file will then be at the core of our Playwright test runner and it will include all the things that our tests need to run. So we won't have any random imports in our test files and everything will go through this file or through our Playwright setup. And we can then control all the dependencies right from here. And I think that's quite nice. To make that work, we import test from Playwright test, we rename it to base, and then we extend it with our own fixtures or configurations and export it again as test so that the spec files can as usually just import tests and expect from our base file. And we also get expect from player test and we export it again. So this is the general base setup that the entire player configuration will circle around. To get our page object model now into our test run, we can go into the extent call and we can add a property that we call dashboard page. First of all, we are now greeted with some TypeScript errors. So let's resolve these. So TypeScript doesn't know what dashboard page is right now. So let's import this one. We also don't have the user object. So let's get this one in. So we have now two imports here. And also we have to adjust the test options here to tell TypeScript what will enter the test runner. And this looks pretty good here. So let's remove that. And now we extended Playwright test with our new dashboard page fixture. When you register your own custom fixtures, you have to pass in a function that then, first of all, can also request other fixtures. So we have here the native page object. And then there's also the use method that you have to call with whatever you want to pass over to your test runs. So we're initializing here a new instance of dashboard page. And then for whatever test will request dashboard page, it will get this instant of the dashboard. And because our spec file is using test from the base file, we can now go in here and we can say that we want to use the dashboard page. And let's get rid of this one here and this one. And I see also I have a renaming thing going on. So let's rename all these to dashboard page. Here we go. And now we can tell Playwright that we just want to use the dashboard page and will automatically create the page object model for me. And if I now look at this spec file, this looks very clean to me. So Playwright is in charge of initializing my page object model. There are no dangling imports going on and everything is kind of documented in our base file. I think this is pretty neat, but you might now say, yeah, but what if I need the user object in our test cases? Do we then import it here again? Let's jump back to our base file and extend the setup a little bit more. If you don't want to run code, but rather just pass static values to your spec files, you can also go into your extent call and you can add them also to your Playwright setup. This static value definition looks a little bit funky, but this array as a first argument includes the values that you want to pass to your spec files. And then there is this option object that will make these value configurable. And I think this is an absolute killer feature. So let's make TypeScript happy. So TypeScript is complaining that user isn't defined in our test options. So let's go in and let's say user equals email password. That could work. Or we use this type here. So let's get in this type instead. We want to be user of type user 
which is available in our page object model file. And because we now have a user object in our player test runner, we can also remove the user here that we imported and we can request it here via the player test runner. So here we have our user and now we can remove this import that VS Code automatically removed for me. And this is now a nice self-contained example. So we now have a dashboard page that uses the user configuration, which we have defined here, to initialize a new dashboard. And similarly, when we now go into our spec file here, we could also go in here if we need the user for some reason, and we could say, hey, we want to use the user object here, which is available in our test suite. So by using the fixture architecture, we can use the base file to document all the functionality that is available, and the spec files then have to follow whatever is convention in the project, and there won't be random imports kind of building up your own testing framework. This is using Playwright's architecture to extend the Playwright functionality, and I think this is super nice. But let's check if it works. Will we now go to the spec file and we run this test case via the Playwright VS Code extension? We see here that there is a log message showing up that I have included in the page object model, and these values here are the values coming from our base setup that we just defined. So here we have them. But what's up with this option configuration? There are three places that you usually can configure your Playwright test runs. And the first two are in the Playwright config. So let's head over there. This Playwright config is pretty standard. It's everything you get when you initialize a new Playwright project. The only thing that I changed is that the defined config call from Playwright test is already using our test options that we defined in our base file. And if we now would like to change static values or configuration values of our player test run, we can go into the general use configuration. If we now wanted to set a general user object for all our player tests, we could similarly go also in here and we could say, hey, we want to have a user object that uses general at email.com. And this configuration will be next to all your other configurations. And you then have a single place where you can configure your playwright setup. So let's check if this works. Let's jump back into our spec file and let's run this again. So when we run this, we now see that we just have overridden our user object that is defined in the base setup here. Another option now to configure our user object would be going back to our player config, and we could also go to the project configuration. So maybe you want to run your tests with different users. We could also go in here and we could say that we want to use a user that is not called general, but rather let's call it project. Here we go. So when we now go back to our spec file and we run it again, we just have overridden the general configuration with our project configuration. And if you want to configure your custom static values only in a spec file, you could also go in here and you could call test use to override the user object only in this spec file. So when we now run this test case again, we have here test at email.com. We just have overridden it another time. And this is exactly how you control all these Playwright configuration options, just with your own stuff. So by using the fixture architecture, you can leverage all the functionality that the test runner already gives you. You can extend it with your own methods, objects, whatever you need, but you will then follow the Playwright conventions. And I think that's pretty nice. But let me show you another reason why fixtures are great. Let me jump into another spec file. And here we have my most favorite Playwright snippet of all times. When I run end-to-end -end tests, I like to listen for JavaScript exceptions. And then if there were any JavaScript exceptions happening during this test run, which right now is only a page code to call, but you get the idea. Then I want to throw an error and tell, hey, something was off in the page while the test was running. And that might be something else, but we should all ship stuff without JavaScript exceptions, right? To make that work, I create a new errors array, then I listen for page errors, and then at the end of the test case, I will just check if this error array is empty. And you might have guessed it already, if I want to have this logic now in multiple test cases, I have to put a lot of repetition everywhere. I could now start fiddling with before all or before each or use the test hooks in the spec files itself, but I'd rather have this functionality just happening so that I don't have to worry about it. So let's jump back into our base file and make that work. The wonderful thing about this architecture is not only that I can create my own custom fixtures, but I can also go in here and I can override the ones coming from Playwright. So when I now take the same logic here and paste it in, I can override the page object so that all the spec files that use page automatically include this logic. Whenever now a spec file requests to use the page object, this code will run first, then it will pass over the page object, and this 
here will be run at the end. So we have here now a custom setup and a custom teardown step that is included in the same place. So you don't have to fiddle with before each, after each, and all these things. And you can stop including these in all your spec files. And it's very cool that Playwright is then also smart enough to resolve all these dependencies. So when the dashboard page now requests to use the page object, it will use this one instead. So let's have a look and add some logging here. So here we say that we are page and let's go in here and let's say we're calling here pom and let's make TypeScript happy and import expect from player itself. So when we now go into our spec file here, we should see these being resolved in order in our test run. So let's run this. Here we go. The page object is initialized first because it was required by our POM fixture. And then we have here the login method that we're dealing with the entire time. And I think it's pretty sweet that I now don't have to worry about JavaScript exception handling anymore because it's right included in my test runner itself. So every test case will just do that. So let's do a quick recap why I do like custom fixtures so much. When your spec files look like that and you have multiple objects and functions coming from different places and you use these repeatedly in your test cases, custom fixtures allow you to compose all these dependencies and hide them away to get a very clean spec file. Additionally, if you're dealing with configuration files, you can add these to your test runners too so that you can leverage the native Playwright use functionality and configure your tests to whatever you need, different projects, different general configuration, or even spec files to configure what should be run in your Playwright tests. And lastly, if you need any kind of setup or teardown steps, you can use fixtures to define them in a single place in your base file to again, clean up all your spec files. The Playwright docs stated very clearly, fixtures give tests everything they need and nothing else. And I think we should follow that when we're using the Playwright test runner. Because by using fixtures, you're not reinventing the wheel and importing, exporting all over the place. You can use the architecture that Playwright comes with itself and streamline it using the fixture architecture and the test runner. And this makes it more readable, more maintainable, and you know where to look for things instead of hunting down imports over your entire test code base. Custom fixtures are just the Playwright native way to connect all the pieces that are needed to run your end-to-end -end tests. And that's all I have for you today. But if you wonder what's up with this raccoon and what we do at Checkly, at Checkly, we allow you to take your existing Playwright code base and run it from around the world on a schedule to use it for production monitoring. So that in case when anything is off in production, you will be the first one to know because we will send you a timely alert about it. It's honestly pretty cool because knowing that production is all right helps me sleep better at night. And that's now really it. If you have any comments or questions, drop them below and I will see you soon in the next Playwright Tips video here on the Checkly YouTube channel.